Discover hope and healing from the other side. Welcome to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Listen, they're all around you, close as a thought or a memory. Messages of Hope. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. We are doing something new this month. The first Thursday of every month from now on, depending on how you all like it, we're going to have what we're having today, which is a Q&A session called Ask Suzanne and Sanaya. For those of you new to my work, Sanaya is my group of guides who provide answers far wiser than I could ever come up with. So as you call in today... I'll try to answer questions based on what I've learned from the greater reality. And if I can't answer them, I'll tap straight into my guides here and now. I've spent the last 15 minutes sitting in the silence, connecting with Sanaya. I got the big lip twitch I always get when they are present and we are ready to answer your questions. So I'm gonna talk for a few minutes, but if you do have questions that will benefit the whole, that means everybody who's listening, please call in to 816. 816- Two five one three five five five, and those would be questions that you would want to ask of the spirit world about guides, the afterlife, what happens when we die, any kind of question like that. We're looking forward to sharing with everybody who's listening. But I wanted to tell you something really cool. Last night I was uh, surfing YouTube, which I rarely do, but I was drawn to some TED talks, and one caught my attention because it had three and a half million views, how to identify your life's purpose in five minutes. And clearly that's something people were interested in. And I was too, because I already know our overall purpose. Every one of us is here to allow the light of our soul to shine. And the more we can express love, which is our divine essence, the more we live a life on purpose. But as for our individual purpose, that's about the number one spiritual question most people want to know. So I was curious to see what this fellow talked about. And I'm unfortunately, I, don't, I didn't write down his name and I don't have the video in front of me, but he stated that uh, he found that 80% of people are unhappy with their lives. And that's a real shame. And it's because they're not living their joy, following their joy. And he found a very simple formula in that is to identify what you're passionate about, then identify who you do that for and what those people get out of it, and then how those people are changed as a result of what you do. And what I really liked was how he framed it this way. How many times do you go to a party and somebody says, hey, what do you do? And now I don't usually tell people I'm a medium because that's not always received in the positive light, which I would like it to be. But if I were to say, well, I'm a retired Navy officer, which I am, then that might lead to a conversation. But this gentleman on the TED Talk said, to put it this way, Instead of saying, well, I am or I do this, put it in terms of how you help people. So I sat and I thought, well, what is it that I do? And I came up, I couldn't narrow it down to less than five. I I came up with, I help people to remember who we are and why we're here. I help people to discover that they're never alone. Let me switch this over to I help you. I help you to know there is no death. I help you to have hope after the death of a loved one. And I help people or I help you to realize how loved you are. I guess when I look at that list, there's there's no doubt why I live a life of joy and you too can live a life of joy when you identify what it is that is your passion and turn it around like that. How can I use that to help others? It doesn't have to be something that you do to make money. It can just be that I make people laugh or I bring people kindness. And so I hope that helps you to frame your lives in a different way and show that service is one of the quickest ways to take us outside of ourselves, connect with others, and live a life of purpose. I had a nice validation this morning that that certainly my work is helping people. When I received an email from a woman who's allowed me to share this with you, her name is Cindy Golden. I don't think we've met, but I see her a lot on my Facebook page. And she wrote to say that this was the one-year anniversary of discovering my website, which is SuzanneGiesman.com. She had asked her yoga instructor if she knew any good mediums in the area. 
And the woman said, well, I don't, but check out Suzanne Giesman and her Buddha at the gas pump videos. If you haven't seen that, just go to the resources and video page on my website, the Buddha at the gas pump. There are two videos and uh, pretty much summarize my work. But she said she checked it out and it changed the course of her life. She talked about having major trauma and loss in the last 10 years and couldn't seem to do anything to change her attitude or the situation. But Cindy wrote, but you and spirit, wow, since last July 5th, I've been meditating twice daily with your recordings. Wow, you get a gold star, Cindy. Uh, I have some free meditations on my site, again, under resources. And I also have some um, for fee uh, recordings through the Hemisync company, which are really awesome. She says she listens to Sanaya recordings daily as well. There are dozens of recordings of me channeling Sanaya for free on my website and probably by now 4,000 daily written messages from Sanaya. She said, thank you for sharing this knowledge and opening up for me the door of the greater reality. That's what it's all about, Cindy. She said, in one week, I enjoyed your monthly webinar, the radio show, and now I'm in the middle of your online Let Your Spirit Soar class. What a high-flying week. This stuff is amazing. I get so excited when people find out what those of you who are listening, we're all interested in these things, and so much information is available out there. But the fun thing is Cindy shared with me a wonderful experience she had. She said, during uh, the Let Your Spirit Soar course, Module 13, I recommended that you ask your spirit guides for a sign, something unusual, meaningful. She said, I asked my guides for a blue or purple feather. That's a good one to ask for, Cindy. She went to give a friend Reiki. They had breakfast on her patio and then left. She said, I was still sitting in her driveway in my car when my friend came running out. She forgot to give me something, she said. She handed me a tiny blue feather. She said she wanted me to have this, but she had no prior knowledge of my request to spirit. My feather from guides. Wow. This is my verification. Yes, Cindy wrote, we are never alone. And then she finished this, this anniversary email by saying, thank you, Suzanne, for your ability to help us. And I love that Cindy wrote, and thanks to Ty, my husband, for all he does as well. And thank you, Suzanne, for making this journey not woo-woo. <laughs> I love that because uh, anybody who knows me, uh, woo-woo is relative. I'm a retired Navy commander and... Nobody would have called me woo-woo in the past, and I'm not as woo-woo as other people I know. That's why I say it is relative. I want to thank Ty also. Uh, the, the fun part about this radio show is finding a place to broadcast each week. We're on the road for six months, and we get in some remote places. Early this morning, we were in the middle of a little town called the middle of nowhere, Colorado. Not really, but we had to set the alarm early to get up and Ty did all the driving today so I could work, and we are now in Pueblo, Colorado, and I'm grateful for the signal. So anyway, that's what today is about, asking questions about the greater reality. You are allowed to call in. I see we just have one caller on the line. I'm pretty much finished talking now. If you guys don't call in, I'm going to have to sing, and that would not be pretty. <laughs> so we're going to put you on the air if you call in 816-251-3555. And I'll tell you, if I don't know the answer, I'm not going to make it up. I was just thinking about when I was in the Navy and I had a tour in Naval Intelligence and I had to brief the senior officers at my unit every morning. And if they would ask a question, I would say what I knew. And if I didn't know, I would just not say anything. And in fact, I remember the captain saying to me one day, you know what I appreciate you about you, Commander Giesman? If you don't know the answer, you say so. So that I've carried over with me into this metaphysical work. And I see that we have a caller on the line. Barbara, why don't we pull you in for the very first call today? Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Barbara, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Michigan. All right. The Upper Peninsula. Well, I hear it's hot all over the country. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. And what is your question? Well, I've heard Sanaya say that murder is free, will gone awry, and to revere all life. I'd really like to know what words of wisdom Sanaya has concerning the subject of euthanizing family, family pets that are ill. Oh, beautiful question. And you are correct. Sanaya has recently 
really gone into depth on the question of soul planning. In fact, for those of you listening, I really recommend you go to YouTube, do a search for Suzanne Giesman soul planning for the longer answer. But pets being euthanized, you know, I asked the same question myself recently. And the answer that Sanaya gave is that motive is all important. And that says it all, doesn't it? Because murder, the motive is not love. Uh, it is free will gone awry when somebody is ignorant of what they're, what is truly important in life, which is life itself and love and compassion for others. But why would we euthanize a pet out of love to reduce their suffering, to eliminate their suffering? And so anything done out of love with a decision that is made from the heart as well as the head that is well measured is acceptable is what Sanaya says, and certainly understood. And, you know, the pain that we feel in our hearts when we have to say goodbye to our pets, this shows us the love is there. If there were no pain at that time, then we would have to ex examine what that relationship with our pet is all about. So euthanizing a pet when it's a necessary time to reduce his suffering is... Uh, one of the hardest things we'll ever have to do, but certainly there should be no guilt when it's done from the heart. Okay. okay? Yes, thank you. You're welcome, and thanks for that really important question. So look, you guys are calling in. This is great. We have Marsha on the line. I'm going to uh, bring Marsha in, and I will let you know that there were some people that couldn't listen to the show live, and they sent me some questions by email. So I'll probably do two live questions, then one that somebody couldn't be here. I'll answer one of those. So back and forth like that. But Marsha, how are you? I am fine, and it's so great to talk to you, Suzanne. Well, thank I you. I love the feedback from folks that are listening to the show. It's just a thrill to be able to connect with you all this way. How can we uh, help you today? Okay. Well, I love all your things, your Facebook, everything, your books. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm a true follower. So um, my question is made on reincarnation. Uh, when we leave this life and return home, I know that we'll be welcomed uh, and met by the people who are currently have passed involved in this lifetime. But will we also be surrounded uh, and welcomed by those who participated in our other lives. Wow. How cool is that? That's a really new twist on that. And my lip twitched as you were asking the question. So that's Sanaya saying, we will answer this one. If my voice goes a little funny as I answer these questions, that's the blending of Sanaya with my uh, the Suzanne stories consciousness. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so let's see what Sanaya says. <sighs> So when you pass from this life, you carry with you the soul awareness of the role you played in this lifetime. And so you will immediately, as you have stated, be greeted by those you know in this lifetime. These are still roles you are playing until you are ready to release that role. But just as in a diorama in a museum, you are lighting up certain circuits with other beings by merely shifting your awareness because your lives in different incarnations are connected to the same oversoul by shifting your focus in the higher realms. You can shift to that other storyline and be connected thus with those characters related to that story. It is a shifting of focus, like shifting a spotlight on a stage. The soul makes these decisions, so worry not. Wow. How's that sound? Wow. Did you follow that, Marcia? <laughs> yes, I did. And I, I am so grateful. Thank you. That I've wondered about yes. that so often, uh, about the other. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. They were, um, Sanaya just had me make some notes the other day to to share in my monthly mentoring session coming up later this month about the diorama analogy. Have you been to museums where you push a button and it lights up like little pathways? Yes. yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 
Yeah. So they're saying that even when a medium does a reading, you're lighting up circuitry to that client's loved ones. And then what if I have to do a back-to-back -back reading? Why I would just not, not press that button anymore and just through intention, press the button to the next client's family members and it lights up those circuits. So what they just said it now in answer to your question is it's consciousness choosing what storylines to illuminate. Very wow. cool. Well, I that answers that because I've often wondered when you get a reading and people from this lifetime come in, if ever there would be people from your other lives would also show up at that reading. But I think I from what you've said, they probably wouldn't do that. I don't know. Not I uh, what I'm being told is it would uh it could possibly confuse those family members who come to greet you who are not aligned with that other incarnation. This is mind-boggling stuff. And and these are the kinds of things that we really won't know for sure till we get to the other side. But that one right. seems to feel right in the heart. So thank you very yes, much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. So let me now answer one that somebody sent in who couldn't be here right away. Ah, okay. So I don't have the name of the person who asked the question, but they asked, why are many of us humans resistant to sitting in the silence on a daily basis? Is it an internal battle with the ego or something else? What can we do to move past the resistance? Now, I haven't given any of these thought, these questions any thoughts, so we're just going to have to rely on Sanaya right away. But uh, it is a combination of issues, Sanaya says, that uh, most definitely the ego gets in the way because if if we all were able to push past the ego and connect immediately with the soul why then ego would have very little role left here the ego likes us to feel separate so there's this automatic resistance and then also ego's going to dig up all kinds of issues that we've spent a lifetime stuffing down it's not the human way to feel those lesser feelings. And when you're willing to sit in the silence and say, show me how I can heal myself, well, you're going to start shining a light in those dark places. But let me tell you, once you start doing that, what you feel you can heal. And when you get past those, always knowing that you're not alone when you sit in the silence, that your guides will be there to help you, that you're connecting with the very highest aspects of spirit, that you're perfectly safe, then it the sitting in the silence becomes something that you don't want to miss. I know for me, it's, it's a sacred part of every morning. And I am so grateful to be married to St. Ty, as many people call him, because every morning without question, he just gives me that time to sit in the silence. He actually makes breakfast and takes care of the dogs every morning so that I have that time to sit and connect with my guides, to remember who I am. So know that the resistance is normal. It's part of the ego not wanting to let you know that uh, you're so much more than the ego. Push past that resistance until you find that this time in the silence becomes one of the highlights of your day and the resistance will no longer be there. All right, so thanks for that question to whoever submitted it. And we have Carrie on the line. Carrie, nice to see your name. <laughs> Let me hear your voice. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm doing great. Nice to connect with you on the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. So You're welcome. What's question. your question today? Oh, sorry. I have a question about physical symptoms. Um, I feel like I'm getting um, some more headaches, more uh, maybe like a spinning feeling. And uh, lately, every time that I go to channel um, or meditate, it's the weirdest thing. I can go days without sneezing. But as soon as I sit down with my legal pad and my pen, I take my first deep breath to connect, and I have to sneeze every single time <laughs> for, like, the last couple weeks. And I don't know what that is or if I'm supposed to do something different. I love that, actually, because you can identify that there is, there is a time when it comes, right? When you sit to connect, it's repetitive. I would welcome that sneeze. When I connect with Sanaya, not only do I get the lip twitch, but when, I, when they really step in, I get this whole body jerk. 
it's actually called a myoclonic jerk. I found it online. And while that might be upsetting to some, to me, it's just validating. We're here. We're ready to talk to you. So that sneeze, it sounds to me as if they found a way to, to, to tickle your nose. And so okay. I would laugh at it and and welcome it. Don't think that you have to have it, though. You'll get to the point where you recognize that you've connected with your team and spirit. As for the headaches, this could be, let me tune in here say, what I'm sensing is uh, just needing to adjust to the higher energy. I want everybody to know that when you tune into higher consciousness, you are always in charge of your own soul and your own physical body. And if something becomes too much, such as a headache or certainly any discomfort, you simply say to higher consciousness, to your guides, your own higher self, back it off, please. So please try that. And uh, one other thing, it was funny when you started to say you're getting all these symptoms. You brought to my mind, Carrie, I've seen these lists of symptoms for people having a spiritual awakening. I'm not sure if you've ever seen that, but actually I have to laugh when I see some of those lists because they say, well, you might feel hot or you might feel cold or you might be getting tired or you might feel really energetic. <laughs> have you ever seen those lists? I have because, well, I kind of asked myself in, in meditation what's going on or my higher self and um, I got growing pains as kind of a, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. a reference, That's but I, the, I never Googled the list. Yeah, well, my I was joking about the list because they cover the gamut. And I believe really what they're trying to say is notice when dif different things are happening to you physically. And you've noticed that. And I love that you asked a question and you got the answer. Growing pains is the perfect answer and probably not the wording you would have used. So chalk that up for your, your guides getting through to you in a in a validating way. So again, it doesn't have to be painful. We call it growing pains. Just tell your guides, okay, I love it that I'm getting new symptoms, but message received, let's back it off a little. Okay? Right. Okay, well, thank you so much, Leanne. Right. Thanks for calling in, Carrie. All right, for those of you who have a question, let me repeat the number. The number to call in is 816-251. 3555. This is uh, for those of you listening after the show is archived. This one was recorded the first Thursday of the month. And from now on, this will always be question and answer day. I have some great guys, uh, guests lined up for the rest of the month. But for now, it's just uh, Sanaya and I trying to do our best to give you answers to your questions. So we have another caller, Elizabeth, on the line. Welcome. Hello? Hello? Hi, Elizabeth. Where are you calling from? Oh, hi. I'm calling from Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Ooh, I think we'll be going through there later this summer. Excellent. Oh, What well, is your is. question today? <laughs> okay. Um, so I actually, um, my daughter passed a few years ago, and um, I know people have had those incredibly vivid dreams, and um, actually my husband has had them, and I... Um, I've had a couple, but they weren't the warm, fuzzy kind. Um, the one that's most impressionable is one that was kind of a sad, dreary dream, and it ended with her taking a big piece of wood, like a like a piece of plywood, and hitting me over the head with it. And I immediately <laughs> woke up with a physical pain on my head. Oh my! And wow! I was, you know, I the first thought that came into my head was wake up like your life you need to wake up and change your life and um because she knew prior to her passing that i was not happy in my marriage i wasn't happy in my job and i was just generally an unhappy person and um you know since that dream um, i've had a lot of, of stuff going on in my life I've, i'm in the process of getting divorced i'm in uh, I've had cancer, which I am now clear of, um, and I'm not wow. working where I used to work. Um, I'm working part-time wow. right now. So I feel like I am making changes, but I, I'm hoping I interpreted the dream properly. <laughs> well, the bottom line is no matter how you interpreted it, it 
it's clear that you've made positive changes as a result, and that's what matters. I am not a dream expert, but I do know that dream visits are positive and not scary. Scary dreams are those that are usually just our subconscious mind running through the jumbled up ideas and thoughts and fears that run through our minds all the time and they come out in our dreams. Yours is kind of in between because first of all, I don't believe that a dream, uh, a real dream visit would leave you with physical pain and that feels like an act of violence to be hit over the head with a board. So I can't say whether that was an actual dream visit, but again, the bottom line is what you did with it. So that could have been coming from your own subconscious. Mm. Regardless, it's wonderful that you've made changes. And I would still hold out the the goal, the vision of having a beautiful dream visit from your daughter who, if she's come to her father in a visit, will do her best to come to you. But our loved ones come to us in the way they can based on our energetic field. So please, anybody listening, don't feel like a failure if you don't get a dream visit. But Elizabeth, uh, again, you've, you're you clearly waking up. All right. Bottom yeah. of the hour already. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Y'all come back after the break. Welcome back. You're listening to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Welcome back indeed. It's the first Thursday of the month, so it's questions and answers with Suzanne and Sanaya. But before we take our next caller, I wanted to share with you, you know, some people may be wondering, well, what what gives her the authority or the ability to answer these questions? And what it is, is daily contact with those in the spirit world, either our loved ones who have passed or guides such as my guide, Sanaya. I sit daily, several times the day and connect in. And all of you can learn to do that. There are all kinds of resources on my website, SuzanneGiesman.com, for doing that. I I love answering your questions, but what I love more than that is teaching you to get the answers to your own questions. But just as an example for how I trust that the spirit world is there and my connection with them is clear, it's the evidence that those in the spirit world will give me. And just Tuesday, I did a reading for a woman who let me know she had a child on the other side, didn't tell me male or female. And I tuned in. I was surprised that her father stepped in. I was expecting to feel a child right away, but he came in because he had an apology to make. Once that was given, he said, let her talk to her son. And I felt a male presence. And indeed, she had a son on the other side. We talked to him for a while. Lots of great evidence, a wonderful connection with him. And then all of a sudden, her mother stepped in from the other side. So we had a big family reunion. And in the middle of talking to her mom in the spirit world, I said, your mom is showing me a plant all of a sudden. It's a tall potted plant. This is definitely not in the ground. It's it's in a pot with long, dark green leaves. And my client said nothing. So I continued talking. I said, well, let me look again. This is definitely a potted plant. It looks like an Easter plant, long green leaves. And she's saying, this is current, something going on in your life right now. And my client gave the most perfect answer. She said, well, I'm going to have to sit with that for a while, which is so much better than saying, no, you're wrong. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I've learned to trust those in the spirit world, even when my client has no idea what I'm talking about. We went on with the reading, talked some more to her son and to her mom. And when the reading was over, we said goodbye. About two minutes later, I get a text. Do you know that in the middle of the reading, the woman's doorbell had rung, but she ignored it so as not to interfere with our reading. She went to the door after the reading concluded, and there sitting on her doorstep was the delivery that had come. It was a tall plant with long dark green leaves and it was a lily an easter plant in july right when her mom was talking about it it was delivered so this guys is such beautiful evidence that these spirit people are real they're real people your loved ones are around you they know what's going on with you and they are doing their best to let you know we are still right here isn't that awesome So enough of my stories. Let's get on to your questions. We have Susan been standing on the line for a while. How are you doing, Susan? Susan, I'm fine. How are you today? I'm good. Jeff, the engineer, tells me I know you. Yes. I'm Irene, Susan. 
six houses down the street. Oh, Susan, Creek. how are you? You did oh, tell me great, you were going to call you. in. <laughs> and I, All right, uh, you're not going to make I me sing, right? I was on the wrong show. <laughs> I thought I was on the right show. But here's my quick question, and I'll, I'll make it brief so that other people can call in. I just was, my question is to ask Sanaya to please continue to give you these downloads and the assistance that they do sometimes with you picking out the photos because this is my go-to thing every day. And one time I wrote to my aware group and I said, you know, sometimes it's almost like Sanaya is reading my mail. And David Taylor from Savannah mm-hmm. wrote me back and he goes, well, they are. <laughs> So anyway, that's, right. that's that's my question to them. Please continue. Okay, and, and to explain to those who are not familiar with the daily messages from Sanaya, I post them on my website, SuzanneGiesman.com. You can also get there uh, by typing in SanayaSays.com. That's S-A-N-A-Y-A. S-A-Y-S dot com or go to my uh, Facebook page, Suzanne Giesman. I post them daily there. You can sign up to get them in your email. But I sit in the silence. I connect with Sanaya. They give me a beautiful message that applies to all of us because all of us are souls and we all share the same basic essence. Then I go to my computer after I come out of meditation. I post it on my website and on Facebook and I go to a copyright free uh, page called Pixabay. You all might like that because we can take any pictures. And Sanaya tells me the keyword to use. And so a word will come up and then a, a whole page of pictures related to that word comes up. And I scan it and Sanaya draws my attention to the picture. And sometimes the picture is not at all what I would choose. And I'll say, really? That one? And I'll put it on there and somebody just like Susan will write to me on Facebook and say, oh, my God, this is the sign I was looking for today. Or this is my anniversary and this is my husband's favorite flower for me. It's something like that. And it's such validation to me that not only does Sanaya know who's reading the messages, but they know exactly what those who view the messages need in that day. So thank you, Susan. I know they heard your request, and there's no way they're going to stop because it's a formula that works very well. Well, you're very so welcome. Thanks. Have a great have, day. I'm, I'm enjoying your shows. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. And we have Irene on the line. I don't know if this is Susan's Irene, but we'll uh, talk to Irene. Hello. Hi, Susan. Yes, it's Irene from South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I would know that voice anywhere. So you were going to make sure I had didn't have to sing today, right? <laughs> yes, I was. I was. I was doing the readers a uh, kindness. No, <laughs> um, I have a question. What can I want to let everybody know who's. Okay. Oh. Hang on a second, Irene. I want everybody to know that this is Irene Fuvalides, who is featured in my book still right here. And I did not put her up to calling in today. And I have no idea what your question is, Irene. So suck it to me. Okay. (laughs) Um, Can you tell your listeners um, about signs and not discounting signs? I answer so many questions on Facebook from members of Helping Parents Heal who question the signs that are so obvious and so wonderful from their children and I know myself I I got a fabulous sign from Carly today and in my old belief system I would have missed it but because of you and your teachings it just turned out to be something wonderful so I think you need to um, talk about signs okay that's a great question or comment what I received as you were asking the question from Sanaya was the word fear and it is, I can hear myself talking funny that I'll just let Sanaya speak here. It is the human side of you that asks for a sign. And then when it is given, you deny it for the human thinks, what if this is not my sign? Do I then have to face the fact that my loved one is gone forever? Or you may also find yourself from the human side saying, If I accept this and share it with others, what will they think of me? Will they think I'm crazy? Will they think that I am merely grieving and looking for any excuse to think my loved one is around? Nothing could be farther from the truth. So there are two reasons that Sanaya gives us right off the bat that we would discount signs. And truly, think of your loved ones on the other side who go out of their way to draw your attention 
to a song on the radio just when you need to to listen to the lyrics that will speak to your heart. Was that a coincidence or was that a merging of two hearts and minds? Your loved one on the other side saying, Mom, Dad, whoever you are, listen now to the radio. I'm drawing your attention to this. Or look up now and look at that rainbow. Or do you see that butterfly I just sent you? And then we blow it off because we say, oh, that's crazy. Or or we don't see it at all. Think how frustrated our loved ones on the other side would be. But I will tell you that they are infinitely patient with us and will keep hitting us over the head with a board, just like <laughs> uh, the other caller talked about the dream, until we do notice. So be be aware of what's going on in your own thoughts. What are you afraid of? And what was it Sanaya said? I'm already backed out of it. Oh, and don't worry about what other people think. So good Great. one. Thanks, Thank Irene. You. Thank you. All right. I'm, you're welcome. I'm going to take one of my previously sent in questions. Then we're going to take Jana, who has been holding for a long time. So Jana, just give me one more minute. A caller from Ireland, a writer from Ireland, Ireland said, uh, how do we delve deeper into understanding who we are as spiritual beings and yet keep a firm grip on the reality of our humanness in this lifetime? Well, I would say I don't want to keep a firm grip on this reality. (laughs) Once you discover the greater reality, the whole spiritual path is about disidentifying with this role we're playing here. We're not going to give it up completely. But when you recall, I am in this world, but not of it, then you know you're playing a role and you play it to the best of your ability, but you don't hang on to it so firmly that it causes you suffering. So you dive in fully to the spiritual path because that's why you're here, for your soul to shine. Your human side will be here as long as spirit breathes you. So play your role, but loosen that grip, and you will find that your suffering will loosen as well. Thanks so much for that question. Jana, I hope I'm saying your name right. Thanks for waiting so long. Hi, Suzanne. Hey, is it Jana or Jana? It's, it's Jana. 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 Okay. Thank you. Great. So I need some so. clarity because I took your, um, when you were in Minneapolis, the Up Close and Personal Guides Workshop, where you got to meet our guides. Yes. And then I've listened to your radio shows, and I know Echo was on, Echo Bodine, and she talked about intuitive guidance being 100% correct. And yet, and I remember from the guides workshop that our guides guidance is their best advice, but they don't know everything. So that kind of makes me believe it might not always be 100% correct. So I'm trying to, because my logical brain <laughs> wants to like uh-huh. understand how do I, how do I go with this? What, what's active ah, this here? This is great. This is, this is the distinction, Jana. Your okay. guides are other souls who are progressing at their own level and they are growing as well. So they have, even mm-hmm. Sanaya has said, you know, that feel, trust everything we give you in your heart and see how it feels. But intuitive guidance is you tapping into the highest level of consciousness available, which is spirit itself, the source. Intuition mm. is how the source speaks to you. It is the voice of spirit, the okay. Holy Spirit. Call it what you wish. But when you tap into that, your guides may chip in, but you are just going straight to the source. And that's why you can trust it. But you have to learn how to tap into that and how it feels. And you learn mm-hmm. to trust it by acting on what you sense intuitively if it does no harm to yourself or others and then when it leads to something good then you learn to trust it more and more but do you see the difference your guides Mm -hmm. are are speaking to you through the spirit but your intuition is the direct path to source Mm. that is excellent i am so glad i asked this question because that makes sense to me and now my brain cannot be wandering (sighs) about at all and I can go with it. Thank you, Suzanne. Beautiful. I love that question and I nobody ever asked it. I never thought about it, but you just you just tune in right now and there you go. So thank you for asking. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I you're welcome. Okay, I have one more caller on the line. So I'm gonna take Sandy's call here in a second and then if nobody else calls in I'll go to my written questions. But this is your chance to be on the radio. 
Uh, the number to call is 816-251-3555. Questions of a general metaphysical nature, which will benefit the whole, which is why we're here, isn't it? To benefit the whole. So, Sandy, thank you for calling. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Hello. Um, listen, I, uh, you may not want this question, but I'll, I'll ask it. I, <laughs> I did a lot of okay. reading. <laughs> uh, you, I watched your YouTube thing where you talked about, uh, William James and Emmanuel Swedenberg and you sucked up an entire day of me looking all of this stuff up. <laughs> so, was that a good day? Uh, what? Uh, it was an interesting <laughs> day. Uh, <laughs> Another, in many so ways. you mean you went down the rabbit hole, it, it intrigued your interest, and then you just continued I just digging, digging, going. digging online? <laughs> digging, digging, digging online, yeah. Okay, but all what, right. Uh, what occurred to me when I did that was one of the great minds of our time, I believe, is Stephen Hawking. And since these okay. two gentlemen were great minds of their time, um, and I kind of know what Stephen Hawking's thinking was about an afterlife, I wonder if you or Sanaya can somehow get in contact with him and find out if he changed his mind. <laughs> you may not that like that That is such question. a great question, Sandy. And it's really funny. The day that Stephen Hawking passed and several days afterward, you should have seen how many people on the same path that we're on were saying, I wonder what medium is going to connect with him first, or I wonder who he's going to come to. <laughs> right. And we can't wait to hear what he I, says. And And so... I didn't even try. First of all, I want to give give his soul some peace on the other side because I have no doubt that he would get to the other side and he may at first experience what he expected to experience. But then, like so many of the loved ones that I bring through from the other side, his eyes are going to be open and he's he's going to have to adjust and say, wait a minute, there is more here. And there's this beautiful light here that is filling me with so much bliss. I don't know what to call this, but some people might call this God. Now, what do I do with my belief system? So it may very well be that he's not ready to talk to mediums, but I haven't even tried, nor am I going to. Okay. This is one of those cases where the the medium who he's supposed to go to, he will find them when the time is right in a way that his message can be delivered with integrity and one that we can all value. So it's, it's intriguing and... <laughs> Well, the it's one going to be great. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I don't. Yeah, I, I would want it from somebody I trusted. So that's why I asked. Um, me too. And um, and, and if he does come to me, he's going to know right off the bat. He's going to have to tell me things about his life that I couldn't possibly know because that's how I always validate. Right. I'm not making this up. I can tell when present when spirit is present by the the feeling of the presence, certain physical symptoms that I get, such as getting lightheaded. But uh, it's the evidence that, that does it for me. So thank you for that question. Uh, Not too painful. All right, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> thank, thanks. All right. Anybody else want to call in? The number is 816-251-3555. Please don't be shy. So meanwhile, let me go to some more questions that people sent in. Here's one. Why is depression on rise among people, and especially amongst the younger generation? What is the solution for such people generally, and what will stop it? What can the younger generation do? So you see, I always take this deep breath before answering because I don't want the answer to just come off the top of Suzanne's head. I want this to be okay. So that is confirming what the first hit I got when I asked that question is, and it's the sense of disconnection. If you've studied any of the mediumship literature, the spiritualist history, those who have been connecting with those in the spirit world for over a hundred years, in the past, mediums and spiritualists would sit for hours on end in the silence to connect with those in spirit. As a result, we had wonderful examples of physical mediumship and apparitions, voice mediumship that we don't experience anymore because it takes a tremendous amount of building the power that the spirits use to come in and make their presence known. Today, attention spans are so incredibly short that we don't have that kind of power anymore. Uh, so I don't have to talk about how often you just go by a school bus stop and look at all the kids. What is the posture they're in? Head down, 
phone in hand, looking at the phone. They're connected with each other, but in a very, mm, shall we say, cerebral way, not through the heart. So that disconnection would certainly lead to a sense of separation. I'm I'm not aware of de- depression on the rise among people, but that could just simply be because I haven't read about that or have the personal experience of it. But I do know that the fastest way to raise our vibration is to reach out and connect with someone else. So if there's anybody listening today who's grieving or feeling disconnected from others, Go out and connect with someone. Go out and serve someone. It's how I started this show by talking about your sense of purpose is what is your passion and how can you use that to connect with someone else? There certainly is no shortage of volunteer opportunities to help other people. So we simply need to recognize that love is what raises our vibration and connecting with others is the fastest way to do that. So I don't have any callers standing by. If you are being shy, pick up your phone, dial 816-251-3555. Meanwhile, I do have some more questions here, and we have about six minutes to go. So while I'm waiting for you to call in, let me read another question. Okay. A woman says, my own son took his life a bit over six years ago. This is a somebody who emailed me from South Africa. She said, I learned a ton from his passing, also the hidden meaning behind his death. But what do I tell other parents who go through this? There is no easy way to teach them that even in the worst circumstances, no teaching is ever wasted. Many don't believe that there's a higher meaning in tragic death, and the result is them never really dealing with the loss. Well... I know that our soul knows why we're here and our soul is here to grow. And we often, unfortunately, do that through the challenges we face in this lifetime. And it's through our choices that we grow. So we can choose to lie on the couch and perhaps turn to addictive substances rather than feeling our pain. Or we can listen to the nudging of the soul. This is why I truly encourage those who have suffered the passing of a child, especially to find a support group such as Helping Parents Heal. That's helpingparentsheal.org or other support group that allows for a discussion of the afterlife because this show is called Messages of Hope. And the hope comes from the belief that there is a greater reality. And as an evidence-based medium, I can guarantee you this life is not all there is. There is a greater reality. So what do you tell other parents who are going through this? Read voraciously, even if it goes against your belief system. The soul will nudge you to what you're supposed to read and find others who have been through a similar thing and talk to them. And most of all, get outside of the house and get outside of yourself and connect with others. When you do that and you make choices based on the heart, you will look back eventually and see the hidden gifts in tragedy. Go to Helping Parents Heal and find the silver lining list. There's a link to it on the homepage of those who have suffered the worst tragedies we can imagine. Suicide of a loved one, loss of a child. It's only the physical loss for the child is certainly still here. And see that even those who've suffered have found the gifts of the soul. So I hope that's helpful. All right. Thanks for the cause. We have Lorene on the line. Hey, Suzanne. How are you doing? I'm great. My, I'm so glad I could get through. My right good friends are not letting me here. down. Good to hear your voice. <laughs> great. I have a question for you and Sanaya, which is even if we're sitting in the power and meditating and trying to connect, we're, we're trying to build the power so we can connect with our loved ones or our guides. And we're doing these things, but we're not connecting. What could be some of the reasons? Um, I have my own theory. Like I've always felt like, well, maybe it'll make me too homesick. And so the connection is not for me to make, you know, because then I, that's a, my own personal thing that sometimes I think is blocking me from connecting. But what are some of the main things that get in the way if someone is meditating and trying to sit in the silence and the power? Okay, great question. And I want to uh, define what Lorraine's talking about sitting in the power is a term 
that refers to the power that breathes us. That is our source. That is love. That is the light. All of these terms are English words that we're trying to use to identify that vibration, that consciousness, that energy that is our very essence. And when we become disconnected from our awareness of it. It is always there. It always flows through us or we would not breathe when we are no longer aware of it because we're identifying with the role we're playing here, the story, then we truly do feel disconnected from source, from each other. And that's why we sit in the power. So the reasons that we may not feel connected, the number one is blockages in our own energetic field caused from simply identifying with our human issues. So blockages can be caused from the very fears you're talking about, Loreen. They can be caused from physical challenges. So if you're not feeling well, your physical pain will distract you. You're going to be focused on that. If you have emotional blocks, such as focusing on thoughts that drag you down, you need to learn ways to, to, Recognize how your thoughts lower your vibration, set them aside, ask for spirit to help you set those blocks aside. There's a beautiful phrase that Sanaya gave in a channeling session once that is, forgive me for ever thinking I was anything less than love. What a beautiful mantra Mm -hmm. to help us set aside blockages. So try a daily chakra clearing exercise, such as the 10 minute transformation that I have on my website to clear out the daily gunk. Perhaps you need to visit an energy worker to heal deeper, larger blockages we may have. Uh, The greatest advice I can give you as we're coming down to the end of the show here is to ask your own guides who always hear you, even if you don't hear the answer, show me how to connect with you more clearly. Show me what is blocking me. I am willing and ready to release it. So thanks, Lorraine, for your question. Thanks to all of you who have called in. Reach out to me on Facebook or through my website, SuzanneGiesman.com, and let me know if you enjoyed the show, and we will continue this the first of every month. See you next week for another great guest.